Why play hardcore? Hardcore gives you one life to kill with and an experience that you're not going to find in softcore. Knowing that you're one step away from restarting that character kind of creates a different atmosphere for the player. You're going to be playing differently. You're going to be more careful. You're not going to be completely face rolling your keyboard and you're going to be building your character a bit more on the tankier side just to play it safe. Now this guide is helped or aimed at helping newer players possibly making the transition from softcore to hardcore and for you hardcore veterans you might learn something new here but we're going to be going over the basics and the fundamentals for anyone new. As for experience with Diablo 4 I've only played hardcore since the early beta days and I'm still going strong in season 2. I can safely say that with season 2 the game has become significantly easier to stay alive in but there's still some some kind of gimmicks that will kind of kind of pop you off and, and and end you quickly so we're gonna go over those in this guide now the first thing i want to go over is going to be death potions and scrolls of escape for those that don't know if you're brand new to hardcore you probably haven't seen this yet but elixirs of death evasion this is a new potion that you can make in hardcore it takes like pale tongs crushed beast bones things like that so you're not going to have a whole lot of those early on these are going to be really precious to you the elixirs of death evasion basically give you a free life when you die you create a kind of an orangish glow around you like an aura of some sort now i'm going to showcase exactly what it looks like to have a death elixir pop on you i can't show you scroll of escape because well you need to be level 20 for that we have a level 10 character here. We're going to actually just use a death evasion and go out and die. Just so you get a visual representation of what it looks like when you die with a dex el death elixir potion active. So with it, obviously you see the potion buff here. Escape death by becoming invulnerable. And here's a visual representation of just what it looks like when you die. And here we go. Here's what it looks like. As you see that orange glow right there, it buys you a little bit of time to get out of a troublesome situation. Now, if you could have scroll of escape right there, it would have made it thing, you know, it would have been a lot easier. You could have gotten right back to town instantly. But without a scroll of evasion, that's what you have to do. You have to just dodge and kind of get out of the way. But that was a visual representation. This also shows you how you cannot take benefit of another elixir of death evasion while this is up this is the debuff right here that i was talking about just be wary if you see this pop up if you see the orange thing pop up that's your cue you need to go you need to go i figured that little visual representation would be helpful so there you go and you're immune to damage for two seconds now in those two seconds you have to get out of danger if the two seconds goes up and you get hit with anything or you didn't heal up to max or something like that, you die. So this is basically a get out of jail free card for death one time. Now there are situations, there are very rare situations where people are dying through their death potion. Uh, we don't really know what causes that yet, but there are situations that cause it. Uh, we're thinking possibly it's something to do with crowd control and blood seekers currently but we don't really know why yet the other item that you're going to be on the lookout for are scrolls of escape now when you see a scroll of escape they only show up as white on the ground these are very very rare these days to put it in perspective in season one and in preseason, i amassed about seven to ten stacks of scrolls of escape over my playtime right now i have about maybe three stacks currently maybe and that's across like a lot more characters making it to level 100 so these are pretty rare now what a scroll of escape does is it's going to allow you to instantly teleport out of a bad situation so let's say you're playing along you run into the butcher you're about to die maybe your death potion pops and you're just trying to get out you pop a scroll of escape it will reset the current dungeon that you're in, but you'll be safe. You'll be alive. That's all that matters. So two things new for hardcore players, death evasion elixir, and also scrolls of escape. Also a little pro tip with scrolls of escape. You can move these onto your shortcut bar here. 
And you can key bind them if you have a keyboard. You can key bind them. Mine is currently to my arrow key right. So you have two seconds to get out of danger. This allows you to get out of danger very quickly. Um, now for console players, you'll just have to kind of, I guess, get through the menu really quickly. But you can put scrolls of escape on your shortcut bar here. Another thing to go over, because I've noticed some people actually lost characters due to this. When you pop a death elixir, like let's say your health went to zero and you you quote unquote popped, popping another dex elix or death elixir will not overwrite the debuff that you have. Once you pop, you have a five minute debuff that pops up here. And you, the only way to reset it is to wait five minutes or you can log out and log back in. Logging out resets all of your, your buffs and everything and debuffs. So if you log out and log back in, you can drink another death elixir and be good to go. Just to FYI, though, re-drinking a death elixir potion will not overwrite the debuff. Keep that in mind. Another thing we're going to tackle and something you need to understand is armor and resistances. So with Season 2, what actually made it a lot easier to survive in is the, well, basically just making resistances work finally. Season 1 and preseason resistances really didn't do anything for anyone. So people skipped on it. Well, this allowed for certain things to be a little more rough, like maybe you're hit with the frozen orb or, you know, any, any of the elements actually did a bit more damage because you were focused more on your armor, which in season one and preseason did negate more for elemental. Things are just different now. And overall, I feel like it's a lot easier. So basically how it works is starting out, you're going to be pretty much even on your fire lightning cold poison and shadow it's all going to be low you're going to be you're going to be working on getting your resistances through your gear your jewelry and whatnot and your goal is to cap out your resistances and also keep your armor at a pretty respectable level mine is very low currently do not use this as a uh, as a guide this is like a, a boss killer barb one shot barb so don't don't pay any attention to the current armor here but you want that number on the left side there reduces physical damage taken from enemies of equal level to 85%. You want that. Now, in game, your armor, you need to have about 13,500. And that's with disobedience and whatever buffs you may have. 13.5k, I believe, is the number needed to do like final nightmare dungeon content, like the, the high end, high end. So, with that in mind, Always keep your armor high. You're going to take way more physical damage than you are elemental damage overall. But do not neglect your resistances. I would not venture out in World Tier 3 with anything less than 30 on resist. And that's kind of cutting it low. So as a safety precaution, 40 plus, no matter what, that will keep you safe. Max it out if you can. You can throw gems inside of your jewelry here like for us our fire resistance was kind of struggling so we threw rubies in our rings to get an extra 60 percent fire resist now just pay attention to everything that is is low and try to raise it above at least 30 if it's below 30 you risk running into situations where you won't even be able to react in time just on the safe side keep your resistance as high keep your armor at a good level now Obviously, if you're experienced, you can run with a little bit lower and be a little more offensive. But as a good note, keep everything high here and pay attention. Once you get out of World Tier 2, go into World Tier 3, your resistances get cut. So as a rule of thumb, when you go from World Tier 2 to 3, check your resistances. See what you need to change. When you go from World Tier 3 to 4, check your resistances one more time. Make sure that they're up to snuff. They probably won't be, but don't fret it. You'll get it over time. Pay attention. That's all you have to do. Pay attention. Now, the last two things I'm going to go over before we jump into actual gameplay content here. Aspects. There are certain aspects you want to kind of keep an eye on. One being disobedience. Disobedience aspect will save your life. It'll raise your armor an immense amount throughout the game. You're going to want to have to keep disobedience on a defensive piece of armor. There's also an aspect of might, which I don't currently have here lined up, but it will give you a 20% damage reduction bonus 
on basic attacks for anywhere from two to six seconds. Those two are some of the best defensive aspects that you can keep on your character at all times. They're not too rare of a drop, to be honest, but they will save your life. So keep an eye on them. Save them up. If you find a good roll on one, you know, keep a hold of it. You want to use that for later. So for aspects, defensive aspects, at least, disobedience and might are your two best friends. They will actually save your life. Unstoppables are something that you want to keep basically as a get-out-of-jail-free card. So for barbarians, we're just using barb as an example. All classes have access to an unstoppable at some point. Um, for barbarians, one is charge. Anything that makes you unstoppable will break you out of crowd control and probably save your life. My very first hardcore death in Diablo 4 was doing the Uber Lilith race. And I lost a druid at about level 89, I believe. In the, he was in the 80s. But I was chain CC'd three times. Now, with Season 2, we're not too worried about crowd control as much. There are a few options for you. One, always have at least one unstoppable ready to, to pop at any point. If you are CC'd, you cannot, I repeat, you cannot use a scroll of escape while you're crowd controlled so just keep that in mind you're going to need an unstoppable to get you out of crowd control if that's an issue another thing a lot of players will do we're not doing it currently on this bar but sticking topazes in your armor will lower the damage you take immensely while being cc'd as i said before crowd control isn't nearly as big of a issue as it was in season one and in preseason, but it is still there. And if you're not expecting it and you don't have anything to get out of crowd control with, it could just kill you. So be wary of that. Watch out for crowd control a little bit more in hardcore. Now, another thing that kills a lot of people in hardcore are explosions after death on enemies. So like fire explosion, poison explosion, death pulse, Things of that nature, be on the lookout. Stay vigilant. If you kill something, give it time to dissipate. Stay away from explosions. Now, another thing that you should learn while playing hardcore is not to mess with the butcher at a lower level. Granted, butcher becomes easier and easier as you get better gear and such. If you're like pre-level 20, butcher can really just take you down. He's quite tuned up for lower levels, so just be careful if you run into Butcher. Season 2, also look out for Bloodseekers. You'll get a giant message that pops up on the middle of your screen saying the Bloodseekers are on your trail. Be very careful if you see that message because that means Bloodseekers are, well, literally on your trail. Bloodseekers can kill you very quickly. Also, pro tip with Butcher. You will hear boss music when he is about a screen away from you, so if you take your time and listen... You'll know he's there. And for the last tip that I have for you all today. Vampiric powers. These are new, obviously, in Season 2. There's a handful of these that will help you kind of just live a bit longer. One of the more important ones is Undying. And another one is Sanguine, Im or Sanguine Brace. We'll go over both of these. Undying will give you just a chunk of your life back at every swing. If you have fast attack speed, this keeps you alive, makes you tankier. Sanguine, or Sanguine Brace, this one is amazing for hardcore players. If you have an issue with gaining Fortify, this will make sure that you don't have a problem with Fortify and grant you an additional 8% crit chance on top of that. Both very good for survivability. Now... One of the first things you should do in Hardcore Season 2, or, well, just Season 2 in general, is do your Vampiric quest line. Do the Seasonal quest line. Get all of these unlocked. Upgrade them as soon as you can, because a lot of these, depending on your build, will be very, very helpful to you. Um, another thing to tie into, as earlier we were talking about Unstoppables, Metamorphosis, the very last Vampiric power that you unlock for completing the Seasonal quest, this actually makes you unstoppable. So if you get crowd controlled and you don't have a CC up, but you have a dodge or an unstoppable rather, and you have a dodge, you can actually just dodge and get out of crowd control. It's that amazing. It's very good. Metamorphosis is one of the strongest 
strongest vampiric powers you can get. Uh, makes a lot of builds pretty strong near the end game with Cabal's Will, etc. But for survivability, it is very, very good. And one more thing, if you are joining in Hardcore and you would like a group to play with, maybe help you out in some content, or if you're just looking for players in general to speak to, we do have a clan. And if you just search for GPPLZ or Good Peoples, everyone is more, more than welcome to come on in if you'd like. We mostly play Hardcore. We have a crew of people that, that play. A lot of them are offline right now because it is about 6 a.m. my time. But everyone is more than welcome. If you'd like to request to join, you'll probably get right on in. We accept pretty much anyone at this point. But if you're looking for people to play hardcore with, you are more than welcome to join us in Good Peoples. And with that, hopefully you guys and gals learned a little something about hardcore. It also applies to softcore players as well. If you're struggling to survive, some of these tips may help you out there. Um, these were mainly the basics and things. There's a lot of stuff I know I missed. A lot of things that, that, uh, you know, could be said still. But regardless, I wanted to try and make the video a little bit short and, you know, just kind of go over the fundamentals and the basics. If you like the video, I'd appreciate it if you would uh, give us a like and a subscribe. Helps us small channels out immensely. And hey, again, if you'd like to join the clan, you're more than welcome to jump on in. We like to play with people. We're looking for more people all the time. But with that, stay safe, stay alive, and we'll catch you on the next video.